we are preparing Ubuntu Mate, 18.04, Bionic Beaver, for distribution on April 26, 2018. With this beta pre-release, you can see what we are trying out in preparation for our next stable version. Ubuntu Mate beta releases are not recommended for regular users who are not aware of pre-release issues. Anyone who needs a stable system. Anyone uncomfortable running a possibly frequently broken system. Anyone in a production environment with data or workflows that need to be reliable. We've been refining Ubuntu Mate since the 17.10 release and making improvements to ensure that Ubuntu Mate offers what our users want today and what they'll need over the life of this LTS release, this is what's changed since 17.10. As you may have seen, Mate Desktop 1.20 was released in February 2018 and offers some significant improvements, Mate Desktop 1.20 supports high DPI displays with dynamic detection and scaling. High DPI hints for Qt applications are also pushed to the environment to improve cross-toolkit integration. Toggling high DPI modes triggers dynamic resize and scale, no logout, in required. Marco now supports DRI 3 and present, if available. Frame rates in games are significantly increased when using Marco. Marco now supports drag to quadrant window tiling. Cursor keys can be used to navigate the Alt plus tap switcher and keyboard shortcuts to move windows to another monitor were added. If your hardware, drivers support DRI 3 then Marco Compass adding is now hardware accelerated. This dramatically improves 3D rendering performance, particularly in games. If your hardware doesn't support DRI3 then Marco will fall back to a software compositor. The global menu integration is much improved. When the global menu is added to a panel the application menus are automatically removed from the application window and only presented globally, no additional configuration is required. Likewise removing the global menu from a panel will restore menus to their application windows. The HUD now has a 250 milliseconds timeout, holding out any longer won't trigger the HUD. This is consistent with how the HUD in Unity 7 works. We've fixed a number of issues reported by users of Ubuntu Mate 17.10 regarding the HUD swallowing key presses. The HUD is also high DPI aware now. Ubuntu Mate 18.04 uses indicators by default in all layouts, these will be familiar to anyone who has used Unity 7 and offer better accessibility support and ease of use over notification area outlets. The volume in indicator sound can now be overdriven, so it is consistent with the Mate sound preferences. Notification area outlets are still supported as a fallback. Mate Dockerplit is used in the Mutiny layout, but anyone can add it to a panel to create custom panel arrangements. The new version adds support for BAMF and icon scrolling. Mate Dockerplit no longer uses its own method of matching icons to applications and instead uses BAMF. What this means for users is that from now on the applet will be a lot better at matching applications and windows to their dock icons. Icon scrolling is useful when the dock has limited space on its panel and will prevent it from expanding over other applets. This addresses an issue reported by several users in Ubuntu Mate 17.10. Many users commented that when using the mutiny layout the traditional menu felt out of place. The Solace project, the maintainers of Brisk menu, have added Dash style launcher at our request. Ubuntu Mate 18.04 includes a patched version of Brisk Menu that includes this new Dash Launcher. When Mate Tweak is used to enable the Mutiny or Cupertino layout, it now switches on the Dash Launcher which enables a full-screen, searchable, application launcher. Similarly, switching to the other panel layouts restores the more traditional Brisk Menu. If you follow the Ubuntu news closely you may have heard that 18.04 now has a minimal install option. Ubuntu Mate was at the front of the queue to take advantage of this new feature. The minimal install is a new option presented in the installer that will install just the Mate desktop, its utilities, its themes and Firefox. All the other applications such as Office Suite, Email Client, Video Player, Audio Manager etc are not installed. So, who's this aimed at? 
There are users who like to uninstall the software they do not need or want and build out their own desktop experience. So for those users, a minimal install is a great platform to build on. For those of you interested in creating kiosk-style devices, such as homebrew Steam machines or Kodi boxes, then a minimal install is another useful starting point. Mate Tweak can now toggle the high DPI mode between auto detection, regular scaling and forced scaling. High DPI mode changes are dynamically applied. Mate Tweak has a deeper understanding of Prisk menu and global menu capabilities and manages them transparently while switching layouts. Switching layouts is far more reliable now too. We've removed the interface section from Mate Tweak. Sadly all the features the interface section tweaked have been dropped from GTK3 so are now redundant. We are no longer shipping mate backgrounds by default. They have served us well, but are looking a little stale now. We have created a new selection of high quality wallpapers comprised of some abstract designs and high resolution photos from unsplash.com. The Ubuntu Mate Plymouth theme, boot logo, is now high DPI aware. Our friends at Ubuntu Budgie have uploaded a new version of Slick Greeter which now fades in smoothly, rather than the stuttering we saw in Ubuntu Mate 17.10. We've switched to Noto Sans for users of Japanese, Chinese and Korean fonts and glyphs. Mate Desktop 1.20 supports emoji input, so we've added a color emoji font too. We're planning on releasing Ubuntu Mate images for the Raspberry Pi around the time 18.04.1 is released, which should be sometime in July. It takes about a month to get the Raspberry Pi images built and tested and we simply don't have time to do this in time for the April release of 18.04. That's it for this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.